I'm John O'Neill from the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. There's a daily clock mechanism within every cell of the body. This affects large aspects of our physiology and our behaviour, such as the times of day when we feel sleepy, how our food is broken down and how we respond to certain medications. All of these are driven by our internal biological rhythms, our circadian clock. Now, in order to work efficiently together, these cells must be synchronised not only with each other, but also with the external cycle of day and night. And the two main factors that do that are the times when we see light and the times when we eat. For light, it's pretty straightforward and well understood. Lighting information is conveyed from the eyes as electrical impulses to a tiny part of the brain, which then stimulates hormonal um, communication of light dark cycles to cells throughout the body, for example, through uh, increasing the secretion of melatonin from the pineal gland, which makes us feel sleepy at night, and also by stimulating the release of the stress hormone cortisol to prime us for wakefulness in the morning. But until very recently, it really hasn't been well understood how these cellular clocks throughout the body are synchronized with feeding time. My name is Dr. Priya Crosby and I am a postdoctoral research fellow at UC Santa Cruz and I work on circadian rhythms. It's been known for about 50 years um, that the time that you eat food um, is a really important cue that synchronizes your biological clock with uh, the outside world. Um, but we've not really understood what the cue or signal was that linked when the time that you ate food to your clock. Now, everyone will have heard of insulin. It's a really important hormone whose levels in the blood increase when we eat and help to maintain constant blood sugar levels. We've discovered that insulin has an extra role. Using cells and also mice, we find that clock proteins, such as the period clock protein, are increased, their production increases in response to insulin every time that we have a meal. And this seems to be the main thing that synchronizes cellular clocks throughout the body with feeding time. It's a really simple mechanism, but it explains a lot. The effect that we see of insulin happens in single cells. If we grow cells in the lab and we put insulin on them, we are able to, to record markers of the rhythmic clock in a single cell, and we can see it be reset just by adding insulin to the cells. So what we found in this paper was that insulin uh, increased the abundance of a protein known as period 2, which is a protein that we know is essential for the circadian clock in cells, um, and that changing the abundance of this protein is sufficient to reset the circadian clock in a cell. So that's the kind of nitty-gritty molecular biology of it. Personally, I'm really excited that something that was a very uh, kind of obscure observation when I was 22 um, in cells has genuine application in the real world. And I can remember like, the most exciting thing was getting, having spent three or four years working in cells and getting molecular mechanism to then do something in mice and be able to predict how they, their circadian rhythm would respond just from my previous cell data. And then to realize that this had real implication for things like shift work and jet lag was like definitely the most exciting thing that's happened thus far is that something that you can do in a dish has relevance in the real world. That was really fun. That was definitely my favorite part. Robust circadian rhythms are important for our health in the long term. Even though mice are nocturnal and humans are diurnal, they have the same cellular clock mechanism that we do and it's affected in a similar way to feeding cycles. Now, there is strong evidence that circadian disruption, as occurs during shift work, is bad for us in the long term and increases the risk of many chronic diseases such as various cancers, neurodegenerative disorders and cardiovascular disease. Our findings help to understand why. For people that are just going on to the night shift or flying across several time zones, the challenge for their biology is that they're seeing light and eating at a biological time when their body is not expecting that signal. 
Now, in order to adjust to the new regime as quickly as possible, the light and the food signals must happen at the same time, allowing our cells to resynchronize. If those meal times don't occur when it's light and don't occur after a period of fast and darkness, which would normally occur when we sleep, then the insulin signal to our cellular clocks will be weaker and may disagree with other hormonal signals. And when this happens, our cellular clocks become desynchronized from each other and no longer able to organize our biology around its normal daily cycle, making it harder for us to stay healthy. So there are a few implications. So uh, we might be able to, well, we definitely can um, advise on behavioral changes that might benefit shift workers and make them less likely to develop some of these disorders. Um, it might also uh, provide a foundation for people to maybe make more uh, medical um, interventions in these kind of cases. Um, and it also has some implications maybe for uh, also for jet lag. So we might be able to suggest ways that you might be able to make jet lag less bad. Um, and uh, it may also have the odd application for just the regular everyday person. So we might suggest that you don't have a kebab at three in the morning on a regular basis because it might also be not just bad for your waistline but actually bad for your circadian rhythm.